study of arithmetic, we know that many problems can be solved with the help of graphs called statistical graphs. Statistical graphs include bar graphs, pictographs, circle graphs, and line graphs. In this film, we are going to learn to construct another kind of line graph called a mathematical line graph. This kind of graph will help us solve problems in algebra. Before we construct a mathematical line graph, let's review for a moment what we know of the statistical line graph. Let's start with this statistical line graph. It shows temperature at different times of the day. We know that in this graph, temperature is a changing quantity. We know that time is also a changing quantity. Since these two quantities vary, they are called variables. The relationship between the two variables is shown by the graph. This type of graph is useful to us in algebra to show relationships between variables. For example, look at this formula, which is a very simple equation, D equals 100T. This equation expresses a mathematical relationship between the two variables of distance and time for any object such as this plane moving at a uniform rate of 100 miles per hour. For each value of time, we can find a corresponding value of distance. This gives us many pairs of values. Each pair satisfies the relationship between the two variables. Yet, only a few of these pairs can be shown in a table. To show a more complete picture of the relationship, we construct a mathematical line graph. These two perpendicular lines will represent the variables of time and distance. The point where they meet is marked zero to show the origin of the lines. Then, arrowheads are marked to show that the lines can be thought of as extending an endless distance away from their origin. On the horizontal line, which we call the time axis, a second point representing a unit of time of one hour is marked. Then points two, three, four, and five are marked to represent additional units of time. On the vertical line, which we call the distance axis, a second point representing a unit of distance of 100 miles is marked. Then other points are marked on this axis to represent additional units of distance. These two axes together are called coordinate axes. Using these coordinate axes, we can graph the pairs of numbers that satisfy the relationship between the two variables in our equation. To graph the first pair of numbers, we use a pair of perpendicular lines to mark distances along the axes. One line goes through the point on the time axis representing a time of one hour. The other line goes through the point on the distance axis representing a distance of 100 miles. The point located by the intersection of the lines represents the ordered pair of numbers one and 100. These numbers are called an ordered pair because the order is as important as the numbers. The number along the horizontal axis is always written first. The number along the vertical axis is always written second. These numbers are called the coordinates of the point. They show the location of the point by means of the coordinate axes. In a similar way, we can graph other ordered pairs of numbers with other pairs of perpendicular lines. The points where the lines intersect have coordinates corresponding to the ordered pairs of numbers. In the same way, 
we can graph many other pairs of numbers that satisfy the relationship between the two variables. By adding more and more points whose coordinates have the same relationship, we will eventually form a straight line. This line represents the group, or set, of all possible ordered pairs of numbers that satisfy the relationship between the two variables in our equation. This straight line shows what is referred to as a linear relationship from the word line with AR added, linear. Linear relationships exist between the variables in equations such as these, which we call first degree equations. In a first degree equation such as this one, where y equals 2x, the two variables can have positive or negative values. To graph negative values, we use axes which are extended past the zero point in opposite directions from the positive values. Negative values can then be represented in this opposite direction. Values of x are represented along the horizontal axis, which is now called the x-axis. Values of y are represented along the vertical axis, which is now called the y-axis. Now we can graph a negative pair of numbers, such as negative 1 and negative 2. We use a pair of perpendicular lines to mark distances along the axes corresponding to these negative values in the same manner as with positive values. The point where these lines intersect represents the ordered pair, negative 1 corresponding to the coordinate along the x-axis and negative 2 corresponding to the coordinate along the y-axis. In a similar way, we can graph the many other ordered pairs of numbers that satisfy the relationship between the two variables. If we continue adding points, we will form the graph of our equation y equals 2x. The graph shows a linear relationship. Linear relationships exist in all first-degree equations having two variables. Such equations are called linear equations. Notice that some linear equations include third terms that do not have variables. We may call these constant terms. In a given equation, their values do not change. Each of these equations may be expressed in the general form for linear equations. This general form is written y equals ax plus b. a stands for the coefficient of x, and b stands for the third or constant term. To see the effect of constants on linear equations written in this general form, let's look at the graph of our equation y equals 2x. Adding a constant term, such as 1, to the equation, we see that the graph intersects the y-axis at 1. Adding 2 to the equation, the graph intersects the y-axis at 2. Adding negative 1, the graph intersects at negative 1 we see that the value of a constant term in a linear equation determines the intersection of its graph with the y-axis. The graph also depends on the coefficient of x, which is constant in any given equation. For example, let's change the coefficient to 1, then 1 half, then negative 1 half. We see that the coefficient of x in a linear equation, written in the general form, determines the slope of its graph. The graphs of all linear equations behave in the same way. So, the principles we have learned for constructing this graph will help us in graphing other linear equations. As we gain practice in using line graphs, 
we will see how valuable they can be in helping us solve problems in algebra. <laughs>